I, I have to say, this is the first time I've been downstairs in this building. It's not, it's not very often. I was, I was a, a councillor since 99, and a fantastic proposal came in to redevelop this, this structure as, as a living building again. Uh, and it's the first time I've actually got into it to see how it developed. And it's, it's a beautiful space uh, where you know, people are quite up close to each other for, for that kind of engagement that we're having today. So first of all, I want to thank the opportunity to address you today and, so, and Social Entrepreneur, Entrepreneurs Ireland uh, and, the, and this, the whole series of talks. Um, I never thought I would be speaking at, this, at the same time as we're doing the spring statement in the Dáil. Uh, at the same time as we just passed the social welfare bill, which was from the budget in October, and it had to take all the way to go through the, the different houses, the committee stages, and it finally passed the Shannon uh, about an hour ago. Uh, so it's, 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 it's progress indeed. And it's the first social welfare bill since I was elected uh, that actually was, was starting very, very, very small bit of giving money uh, back into the system of expanding the social welfare budget. And, and in many ways, it's a, it's, a, it's a great opportunity for me to actually kind of, to bring you up to date a little bit of what's happening within uh, social protection. Because when I became unemployed uh, in the 90s, it was the place where you went and collected your entitlement. Uh, it was where you collected your dole money. Uh, in the 80s, I was up in Werewolf Street, uh, where we, were, we went up and we, you collected your money and the public civil servant was on the other side of a grid and they slipped the money out. But that's after you queued up a three or four different hatches. And it was really then, in, in, at that stage, you lost your dignity. Um, that was, and like, I remember getting transferred out to sign on at that from Werbrook Street out to uh, Clendalkin, where you queued outside the local guard station uh, to sign every week, uh, where you then could go down and collect your money in the post office and then everybody drives by and you're kind of stigmatized oh they're the unemployed and we progressed i believe we progressed along that and it's been a very difficult period in for society and for citizens in particular from where we were uh of paying a benefit in social protection where we're a proactive uh, department now that's trying to assist people back into work uh, I was very fortunate, I represented an inner city community. That first time that mass unemployment uh, happened to them was the containerisation of poor traffic. And at that stage, uh, unemployment went up to 60-65%. But right through the Celtic Tiger, uh, in many of the communities I represented, we had unemployment rates of 54%. Uh, when people were talking about full employment. Yet there was large sections of the community I represent on Dublin Local City Council that had unemployment rates of 54%. Uh, I remember doing a particular flat complex and that was the, that was the figures came. It was the local LES that done it. Uh, we done it in partnership. We, we shared the work and shared the outcomes. And when you broke down that figure, uh, it was intergenerational. And certainly when I got an opportunity within social protection uh, to try and ensure that this time, as recovery is starting to come, is that we leave no one behind. Uh, so that just doesn't mean that people now leaving school should be able to go into a job. What I want to see, and what the government very much wants to see, is the number of people that lost their jobs in, at the beginning of this recession, and this goes back five or six years now, and I would have friends and people I meet on a regular basis that are now five years unemployed. Now they've got a little bit of temporary work here and there, but by and large, they haven't worked for five years. There's an enormous gap. Uh, when, they, when they go to an employer, they have this big, enormous gap in their CV. It's through no fault of their own. The work just wasn't there. So how are we now going to develop what I would call an inclusive society for the people that have been worse affected during this, this recession. How do we make sure that they can share in the recovery? And I believe firmly the way we can make sure that they share in the recovery is to make sure that they have the opportunity to go back into employment. And what's happened and what the Tarnished has developed in that is what's called the new intro centres. Uh, and they've been springing up right across the country and what we call them is the one-stop shop. 
And often there's an awful lot of barriers in going back to work because the first thing you fear is what allowances will I lose? Will I lose the medical card? How will I survive from the period of the time of I take up a job to I, to I get the first salary check? Whereas how do we fill that gap? Uh, and these are, are, are real problems for real people. And a lot of those problems in many ways have been resolved, but the information isn't out there. So the intro centre gives a one-stop shop for a person that's unemployed. We have the community welfare officer stitched in. We're trying to bring in the new ETB boards, which replace the VECs. So if a person is getting a job, we would hope to be able to say, we work with the community with social welfare officer of bridging the gap from the first day they go into employment and make sure that their salary comes in. The other big fear is, well, if I only work for six weeks, I'll go to the back of the queue again, and I'll have to re-engage. And sure, I could be three weeks without money. So we've solved that problem in many ways by making sure that the claim is just set aside. And you, if you're unfortunate enough to have to come back onto the unemployed, it's reactivated immediately. So if you come in on a Thursday, the following Thursday, there's, 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 there's money there for you. So that fear is taken out. And that fear is real. If you have three children uh, at home and you're saying this, well, if I lose my job, it's going to take me six weeks to get my medical card back. It's going to get six weeks for my social welfare payment to come back on stream. So in many ways, those intro centres are operating on that. But the biggest change within the intro centre is the job activation element. Uh, we're currently uh, appointing 20 case officers, which will probably have a, have a workload of about 400 employers. And we're going to go out to those 400 employers. The case officer will build up contacts with the 400 employers to say, there is a real resource. It's 350,000 people unemployed. If you're recruiting, the first place you should recruit is from the live register. Uh, and give people a real chance to get back into society, to get it back out of poverty and get back into work. So that's a service now we're, we're building for employers to take people from the live register into work instead of recruiting people from our, our, our in many of these cases, headhunting. And I was out in Terrenure with a company and he was setting up uh, and he was doing uh, care packages. And I said, where are you getting your recruits from? Oh, well, he says, my competitor. And I said, but, you know, we'll help, we'll train, we'll bring on. You know, but why go looking for, competitor, for staff from competitors when there's 350,000 people that want, not all wants to go into, into care area, but there's a resource there. And I think it's frightening to think that we were heading towards a half million unemployed. Uh, 350,000, 10%. Uh, there's very few commentators that were on Vincent Brown's show four years ago that would have said, uh, we will be into single figures uh, on the live register by 2015. They were talking 2017, they were talking about another bailout, etc., etc. Well, we're going to hit 9.9% sometime this, uh, in, in very soon, I would say, in the next couple of months. So we will go through the magic barrier of 10%, uh, which I think is, is significant. And when we talk about t full employment by, 20, by 2017, and the figure 2020. That can't be just full employment of taking people from the, from the live register. Think about the hundreds, the, the thousands of people that people, because it's voluntary uh, emigration or enforced emigration. It was forced emigration because there was nothing here. We now have to create a society first and an economy second that can attract people back, back to Ireland and rebuild communities. Because uh, Sister Stan was speaking before me, a lot of communities have been destroyed over the last seven and eight years. And we're into the position. And the ESRI report that said you know, social transfers worked in Ireland. It worked to an extent. But an awful lot of people, and the majority of the people that had depended on social welfare, had a pretty miserable lifestyle over the last number of years. But how can we build, and I think what we're talking about today, is how can, we, how can we rebuild the society we want and how can we improve? The old way, I think, is gone. Uh, it can't be uh, the Taunish, uh, the Taoiseach, uh, handing down the Bible and say, this will work. Trust us, this will work. 
It needs an inclusion of people. It needs discussion. It needs a conversation. And also it needs to, to, to try many different projects. To, and we won't always get it right. Uh, I was in Saligo there uh, last week, and we're just coming to an end of, of the DAC program, uh, which was run in the border counties. Uh, and it was 14 projects that was co-funded by the Department of Social Protection and the EU. And this was to, to look, at pe look at how we can help people with disabilities re-enter the workforce or enter the workforce for the first time. And I think the most amazing thing in relation to, to of doing 14 programmes, and we put it out for tender, and it was 14 different groups that came up with 14 different total different ideas on how we could help people uh, with disabilities uh, enter the workforce or stay in the workforce. And it was, it, it was great to go around and, and, and talk to the different groups. And one group said, well, my idea didn't work, but wasn't it great that I got the opportunity to try it and fail and no repercussions? No, they said, oh God, that failed. We tried, it didn't work. There's nothing wrong with trying an idea to bring people with disabilities into the workforce. And if it failed, of the 14 projects, I reckon about seven were successful. We now need to do the assessment and then we look, need to look at mainstreaming then through our intro centres and not just in the border counties that, that we, t we piloted the same. So what I'm trying to say is, is, is we need many ideas. Not all those ideas will work. Those ideas have to come from the sectors that are represented here. They have to come from uh, the private sector. They have to come from government. Uh, and we have to try many, many different ideas. Uh, uh, since our stand was talking about the, the homeless agency, uh, homelessness, and like I would deal with pe people on a regular basis, uh, and you would get an answer, uh, certainly when I was a local authority, oh, if, 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 if you get that particular group a house, it's not going to work. Uh, or, okay, that worked in America, but it won't work in Ireland. There was a great fear of trying new ideas. Uh, and I think within elements of like the social entrepreneurs, is there's elements of, of trying those ideas. See, do they work? Do not be frightened to fail. But the biggest mistake is not to learn from, not to learn the lessons from the failures. Uh, all the way through the American uh, recession from uh, the 20s into the 30, 30s, Roosevelt had absolutely no fear of trying new ideas and those new ideas failing. All he picked himself up and tried another idea to try and get his, the American economy running again. Now, that's fine for the economy, but we have to rebuild a society. And what we have to do is try new ideas. Don't be fearful from where those ideas are coming from, but only be fearful if, you do, or if you're not prepared to try. Uh, and that's, what I, that's my approach. I'm not fearful of trying. I'm not fearful of failing. But I'm, I'm not going to stand back and not try new ideas on a constant basis. Because I've seen too many of my friends, uh, too many members of my family, and too many members of my community being left behind when, when growth came into the economy. There was an idea is increase unemployment benefit, but sure, they're too long out of employment, they're not going to get work. Now, I don't believe that we should put anybody on the shelf and say, the recovery is not for that group, it's for the young people coming out of colleges. Yes, it's for the young people that have come out of colleges, but it's also there for the 30 year old that is now 37 year olds and seven years unemployed. The recovery is for him and her as well, and we can't leave them behind, or we can't leave the 50 year old that lost his job when he was 45 years of age. Uh, we tried that before. It doesn't build an inclusive society, uh, and that's what I'm about. Uh, it's been a hard road over four years. There is a little bit of, and I can see that light coming down me, I wish the recovery uh, light was as strong, but there is a, there is a light at the end of, of the tunnel. It's, it's starting to filter in. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, the live register dropping to 9%. I think it'll, it'll hit there relatively soon. But when we start getting there, we have to make sure it's shared equally across. And the most vulnerable and the people that have been hardest hit during the recession are the first 
to start feeling that recovery, start feeling that regrowth, start feeling that opportunity to get back into employment, education or training. We have a responsibility, and I don't mean a political way, I mean as a society, we have a responsibility to make sure as this recovery grows, everybody gets an opportunity to share. A uh, little bit of disjointed thoughts, uh, but I think you can see the, tr the trend and see where I come from. Uh, you know, when, I, when, I, when I'm in a doll, I often feel in many ways uh, how much I have to add to the conversation. Uh, and people sometimes say to me, Are you, did you go to Trinity or UCD? And I said, no, I went to University of Life. Uh, nearly all my classmates left at the intercert. I think at one stage, there was only two of us in Ireland. The rest had to emigrate. Uh, I, I emigrated for a short period as well and came back. We, the first thing I, I would like to see for my community, which is an inner city community, is, is equality of opportunity in education. And the only way we can achieve that is by early intervention. Uh, and I think we have to start targeting early intervention in education. And there's work being done, I know, it, by Professor Josephine, Josephine Bleach in uh, early learning initiatives. Uh, and we have to look at that for all the communities around that hasn't historically got a record of going into toward level education. The intervention has to start placing, has to start taking place at the age of two, three and four before they go into primary school and we have to give the support. support. And that's an idea that came from social entrepreneurs of targeting that type of investment into very young children and young families to make sure that they get equality of opportunity later in life to go into toward level education. And we have to make sure those, those opportunities are. I hope I haven't spoken too long. It's just a couple of random thoughts in, in, in relation uh, to where we are at the moment. I never thought we would be where we are uh, four years ago. Uh, I actually uh, believed some, sometimes, some nights, I, in total uh, disheart, I'd listen to Vincent Brown and we'd have all the different instances. You're heading into another bailout, we're, heading, we're looking at 50% unemployment, uh, things are terrible and there's not, not a hope of coming out of this until 2020. Well, thankfully, we're a lot further along the, along the road than what they said we'd be. Uh, and the challenge that we all have is to make sure everybody shares in the recovery. Uh, and I think that's a very large challenge, and I hope to be involved uh, over the next couple of years to ensure that everybody has an opportunity to share in the recovery. Thank you very much.